Today we're talking about the collapse of the wave function in quantum mechanics, a very mysterious phenomenon, but I'm going to attempt to explain to you why it's not as weird as you might think. I intend for this video to be more of a discussion based video. So if you have any methods for interpreting the strange results of quantum mechanics, be sure to leave a comment below. So that's a really good question. And I would say a large proportion of physics asks the following question. If you know the state of a system at one time, for example, you have a particle in the wind and it has a certain mass, you might ask, what will that particle do as a function of time? So given the current state of a system, how does that state change? In classical mechanics, you would use laws like F equals MA, or in more complicated scenarios, you might even use Lagrange's equations to find what does that particle do as a function of time. In classical electricity and magnetism, you would use Maxwell's equations to find what is the electric field in space, what is the magnetic field in space, and how do particles in these fields move around. Quantum mechanics is set up a little bit different. You have a vector, psi, which tells you all the information about your system. And you have a Hamiltonian, which in general tells you all the information about the surroundings, the fields that that particle or system is subject to. The Schrodinger equation basically tells you that the time evolution of that system is dependent on both the current state of the system and everything that the system is subject to. So it would be nice if the Schrodinger equation told us everything, but that's actually not the case. The Schrodinger equation does really well when a system is off on its own, evolving in some environment. But as soon as the system is observed, meaning you measure a quantity like energy or spin or something else, the wave function of this particle, which essentially encompasses everything you know about that state, collapses. And the collapse of the wave function is not governed by the Schrodinger equation. And you might think this is weird. You think by observing a particle, somehow it's changing what's happening. And people think, oh, does human consciousness have something to do with it? Well, I would say no. And I think this is a fundamental problem with the language that we use to describe quantum mechanics. The word observed makes you think that there's a conscious viewer looking at something and taking in information, but that's not actually what it means in quantum mechanics. What it really means is that a system is measured, or what I think would be an even better word is probed. The system is put in such a scenario that it needs to have a definite energy to interact with its surroundings. It's probed maybe through a magnetic field in the case of spin. And because it needs to have a definite energy, it collapses and has a definite energy. It has nothing to do with a conscious observer looking at the particle, but rather that it's in an environment where it needs to have a definite quantity. The other thing is that when we observe something in real life, we rarely interact with that system which we're observing. For example, if I'm sitting here and I'm looking at a chair, I can look at it and see it and take in information, but I'm not interacting with the chair. I'm not changing anything about it. But there actually is an interaction taking place between me and the chair. A photon comes in, bounces off the chair to my eye, and then I observe it through whatever biological mechanism I have for observing photons. The thing is that the chair is macroscopic, so that photon bouncing off of it and hitting my eye, the bouncing of the photon doesn't really affect the state of the chair at all. It's so negligible that you can't tell. But if, for example, I was observing a quantum chair, a really, really small chair, the only way I could do so is from a photon bouncing off it and hitting my eye. But because the quantum chair is so small, the very act of that photon bouncing off of it and hitting my eye is going to affect its state. Anyways, in general, to observe any system, you have to probe it in some way. For macroscopic systems, the probing might not affect it very much. For quantum systems, the probing will appreciably affect it in such a way that its wave function collapses and changes to be a state of definite energy. A really good example I heard is suppose you're blind, so you can't see at all, and there's a surface of a lake, and your job is to measure the surface of that lake using your hands. So you feel the lake to gather data, but the very act of feeling will change the surface of the lake. So by observing the lake, you're changing the state of the system. And that's exactly what happens in quantum mechanics.
So yes, position and momentum are things in quantum mechanics, and you have the famous Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So how does that coincide with everything I've just been talking about? Well, suppose you have a quantum state, it's starting in some wave function, maybe you measured its energy, so it's in an energy eigenstate, and then it moves around according to the Schrodinger equation. So suppose you then momentarily want to measure the position of this, say, particle. Well, in order to do that, you need to build a device. You need to probe the particle in such a way that you can measure its position. But if you're going to measure its position exactly, you're going to need a very, very, very small detector. The particle will pass through that detector. Maybe there's a field in that detector and it will light up if the particle goes through it. If the detector is very small, you're going to need a very powerful field inside that detector so that when the particle goes through that detector, there's some appreciable response. And so the result of that measurement of that particle going through that small detector with a very large field is that you're going to have a very large potential transfer of momentum to that particle. As a result, you've measured the position of that particle very well, but you've transferred this potentially large unknown amount of momentum to the particle. So the closer that you measure the position, the more uncertainty you then have in the momentum of the particle. So really these quantum uncertainty relations between position and momentum are more so statements about the capabilities we have for probing particles. You can't accurately measure the position of the particle without transferring it a large momentum. In conclusion, you can't measure a property of a system without changing other things about that system. You can't measure the energy, for example, of a particle without sending it through a measuring device that has some sort of field or something else. And that's going to affect everything else about the system so that the wave function collapses. Now, it's true that we don't exactly understand the mechanism of the wave function collapse. But what I hope to dispel is this myth that it's an observer looking at a system, a conscious observer, that's somehow changing the state of the universe. That's not what's happening. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to let me know, like and subscribe, join the Discord server as well, and I'll see you next time.